Well, hey guys, and welcome back to another Intercept Modeler. In this video, we're gonna talk about 3D printing. Well, hey guys, and welcome back. It is April, 2020, and uh, we're right in the middle of this whole coronavirus situation. And as I mentioned in the last video, I'm gonna try to put a little bit more content on the channel here during the month of April. I'm going to give it a shot to add a video on the channel every Monday and Friday. So this is the first of those videos. And in this one, I'd like to touch on 3D printing, resin printing in particular. Now, resin printing is very much all the rage right now. I know a lot of us are either looking into it or have already gotten into it to expand upon our hobby, to uh, print parts and model kits and all kinds of things. There's a lot of potential in technology. Um, and I'm going to just convey some of my experience here to you about uh, what I've gone through to try to get started in 3D printing. First, what I'd like to do is just kind of give you a condensed version of how resin 3D printing works. Now, a number of these printers are designed like this, where you have the base, which contains all the computer components, the LCD screen, the UV light source, and a touch screen that allows you to access the interface to work the machine. You have a platform that raises up and down on a Z-axis, which needs to be leveled prior to printing. 3D files are manipulated in software, in this case, Cheetubox. Once the file is manipulated, sized, and prepped, it's exported onto a flash drive. Resin is poured into the vat, and the printing process begins. The light source is used to cure the resin as the print is built up layer upon layer. There are a variety of liquid resins available to you. The ones I used uh, were the ones by Elegoo. You have a water-soluble resin that you see here and there's the other standard type of resin. Now the one thing I can't stress enough is that the materials you are working with here are toxic. It's important that you have nitrile gloves and to use some sort of mask. I used one with a respirator because I just didn't want to take any chances. A number of people just use a regular uh, N95 mask, which are kind of hard to find right now at this point, but you need something to help protect you from the fumes. Now, although the resin can be cured out in the sun, it's also not a bad idea to have an additional UV light source. And this is one that I got from Amazon for about 25 bucks. And of course, eye protection is a must. And these types of materials need to be handled with care. They are toxic. You can't let them get on your skin, can't breathe the fumes. So the machine has to be operated in a well-ventilated area. Now, once the print is completed, they need to be washed off. Most people use a 91% alcohol solution, and others have turned to alternative products, such as these degreasers. Now, the printer that you see in that segment is called a Shadow Point 5S by Kichi, that's spelled Q-I-D-I, and they're known for their filament printers. Uh, this apparently is their first into the um, lower cost uh, resin printers. And the reason I chose this is because it seemed to have some upgrades over the Elegoo Mars, which is a very popular printer. And uh, the other one is called the Anycube uh, Photon S. And it seemed to have uh, a little bit of both merged into one. Uh, it has these uh, carbon filters that are supposed to filter the toxic fumes, or at least help filter those out. Um, it has some of the features that the Photon S has. Um, so uh, Mars, the, the Elegoo Mars printer um, is supposed to be uh, upgraded to uh, what's called the Elegoo Pro, um, and supposed to, again, have very similar features to this, but I really wasn't sure when that was gonna come out and I wanted to get started. So I ended up ordering this one based on some reviews and some videos that were out there. Uh, so I thought it would work out, but unfortunately it really didn't work out for me. Uh, this is actually one of two printers uh, that I've had experience with. Uh, the first I ordered from Amazon, and uh, I got that in and it didn't work uh, from the start. Uh, it turned out uh, after contacting customer service, which by the way, I have to say is pretty exceptional with Kichi, and they are known for their customer service. Uh, it turned out that the components inside the unit were bad. So I was uh, at a point where I just decided just to return it uh, because I was trying to get within that window where I could get my money back. And uh, after I returned it, Kichi actually contacted me and they sent out another printer for me to try. And uh, so I was very hopeful it would work the second time around. I did get one successful print, but uh, about 10 failed attempts uh, later, um, I've decided to kind of hang it up with, the, with this particular printer. Um, as you can see in these pictures, it was just having one fail print after the other, which actually is not uncommon when you get started with 3D printing, but there, no matter what I did, and I'd follow the advice that this, uh, the uh, Kichi support gave me, nothing, nothing seemed to work. 
So at this point, I'm actually going to hand this over to a friend of mine who's a bit more mechanical than I am, see if he can get it to work. Uh, in the meantime, I'm actually uh, going to go ahead and order an Elegoo Mars printer. Uh, it's on sale right now, and uh, uh, Amazon is, uh, there's, there's a little delay in shipping from Amazon because of the current circumstances, but I think that's the direction I'm going to go. So that's been my experience, and hopefully you can kind of weigh that in as you're looking into this. I will definitely keep you guys updated. In the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and get started with a 3D print that my friend Ken Spriggs uh, sent out to me. Uh, this was printed on his Elugu Mars printer. So here we have two prints of the figure, and the reason Ken sent two is that he felt that the first had too many imperfections that were along the back side of the head and the rear side of the sculpt. The second one is of the same type of resin, they're different colors because this one has already been primed and the face masked off for painting. Now the other thing that I have found is that there is a learning curve when it comes to working with the software provided to process and prep your files. And this includes how to position the object on the platform along with proper application of the supports that are needed. Although the software has a function that will put the supports in place for you, how you position the object on the platform and where the supports are positioned can not only affect the success of the print, but also affects how many surface imperfections you'll have to deal with later. This was the case with our Batman sculpt. Both printed, but one had more imperfections than the other, and the difference was how this part of the process was handled. Now, sculpts like these often include bases, like the ones you see here, and as you'll note, there are drainage holes at the bottom. This is done to facilitate the drainage of resin, since these are hollow. The software gives you the ability to make the object hollow in order to save resin. These prints do not need to be solid, and this helps conserve materials. So back to our print now, this version of Batman is from the Dark Knight Returns graphic novel, and if you're not familiar with this look, we have a heavier set, older Batman whose face shows wounds from a recent fight. Here's some artwork showing the appearance I'll be shooting for. For the light gray suit, I'll be using Wolf Gray from MSP Paints. So the first step, I use my airbrush to apply the Wolf Gray. Having a snapshot of figure with an overhead light source helps me as a guide as I apply shadows and highlights. I use this neutral gray for the shadows on the bodysuit. Once I was satisfied with the shading on the body, I moved on to the symbol on his chest using neutral gray mixed with black as the base color. For the highlights, I mixed in Vallejo's somber gray with a little bit of white and darkened the color up with black further for the shadows. It was now on to the cape and cowl, and I stuck with the same color I used for the bat symbol, using a combination of neutral gray and black for the base color, lightening that up with somber gray for the highlights, and again darkening it with black for the shadows. Okay, so we have the highlights and the shadows applied to his cape and cowl. I put on a gloss coat just to protect that. Let's go ahead and peel away now at his face mask, and then we'll get started on painting the face. So with face painting, I follow the formula that I usually do, and the first coat is a mix of beige red mixed in with one to two drops of sunny skin tone, and one drop of vermilion. A retarder or flow enhancer is added to thin the mix, and this is applied to the face. Next comes dry brushing with beige red and a few drops of light flesh, and this is brushed over the peaks and high points of the face. A reddish mix made of leather brown and light brown is applied as a thin wash to bring back and enhance some of the facial details. Now there are more steps to go through, but I do have a summary of these steps for any of my subscribers, so just contact me at intersettermodeler at gmail.com and I'll send them right over to you. Okay, well I'm pretty much uh, done here now with his face. I'm very pleased with the way everything turned out. Uh, wrap it up here for the lips, I used a vermilion wash. And uh, for the scratches on his face, I ended up using uh, this uh, Marin Brown color right here. And um, then for his teeth, I just mixed ivory and a light brown because it shouldn't shine out too much. And I did a vermilion wash over his teeth as well. Okay, and oh, and finally I finished up with a gloss coat on his teeth. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get to the base now, and then we'll wrap up the project. Okay guys, so here we now have the final reveal of the figure and stand together. This was printed on an Elegumars 3D printer and measures a little over 4 inches in height when placed on the stand. 
The design of the figure is based on the graphic novel The Dark Knight Returns, and the details can really be appreciated once the figure is painted, and it just goes to show just how nice these reprinted models are. The files for this bus can be found for free on Thingiverse and My Mini Factory. And the designer of the sculpt is a gentleman by the name of David Ostman. And I think you'll agree he did a fantastic job with this sculpt. Well, before I wrap up here, I wanted to show you one other print. This is the only successful one I had on the Kichi printer. This is what he looked like to start with. So I worked on him just after finishing the Batman figure. What you see here is I'm applying the Stino Res Flesh Tone Primer to start with on his face, and that was really the only difference. The rest of the technique was basically the same for his face. And this is what he looked like when he was completed. The bust measures about two and a half inches in height, so it's smaller than Batman. But as you can see, the detailing is also very good. Okay, well I hope you guys enjoyed that video. My goal here was to give you a little insight about 3D printing, particularly if you don't know anything about it or haven't yet looked into it. Uh, I don't consider myself an expert in 3D printing, but uh, I just want to convey my experience of what I've gone through to try to incorporate this into my hobby, and I'll keep you guys an update as I go along. I do want to mention though that as I posted some of my concerns about the Kichi printer on Facebook, I was contacted by a couple people who have been printing for some time, and bear in mind that the 3D printing community has been around for some time now, and it was their opinion that, well, you kind of get what you pay for, that these are low-end printers and they're going to have problems. And, you know, that might be the case uh, in the long run. I might have to invest in something that is more money. Uh, you know, I just want to jump into this at this point, and since a lot of people are having pretty good success with the Elegu Mars, that's my whole thing about uh, purchasing the Mars, and uh, you can see my friend Ken Spriggs has quite successfully been using the printer, so, you know, hopefully that'll be a good jumping off point. Uh, the one thing about uh, printers that are more expensive, they also tend to be a little bit larger, and of course the uh, advantage there is uh, they have the capability of, of printing larger objects, which would be a cool thing. So, so we'll see how it goes. I think uh, hopefully the Elegoo Mars would be a good way for me to go, and like I said, I'll keep you guys updated. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I do intend on providing more content for the channel. I'm hoping to do one every Monday and Friday, so I'll definitely give that my best shot. All right, now I have one lined up for this Friday. It's a short video and something I've been wanting to share with you for some time, so I won't say anything more about that. And I also have an interview that I'm hoping to get lined up for you guys. And uh, one thing that's uh, been asked of me is to uh, do a video sharing uh, and showing you guys my collection. And, uh, well, now that I have some extra time on my hands, Looks like I'll be able to do that for you guys. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at innercellarmodeler at gmail.com. Lastly, I was happy to hear that uh, um, Wonderfest uh, was rescheduled for the fall. I know that uh, these types of conventions have had a tough time with this uh, coronavirus situation. I can only imagine what it must be and the cost you undergo to have to reschedule these things. So, um, But at least we know that there's a good chance it's, it's going to happen um, you know, in the fall, so uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure it will. Um, uh, there's there's definitely a lot of time from now until then, and hopefully this whole situation will resolve. So, uh, and that might be something I might be able to make. I just have to kind of wait and see how my schedule works out. So stay healthy, guys. I will see you in the next one. Take care. <laughs>